Welcome to Rock Talks. Today we are talking to Paul Masurkiewicz, drummer from Cannibal Corpse. We discuss the new album Violence and Imagine, a possible future for the band without him and Alex Webster, the Ace Ventura movie, and the incorporation of Eric Rutan on guitars. Hello, Paul. Thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Rock Talks. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. All right. Let's talk about the new album, Violence Unimagined. Uh, it's it's going to be out in April 16th, I guess. Yep. Right? Through Metal Break, yep. Metal Break Records. We already heard the first single, in Human Harvest, and we got a, a pretty good idea what this album is going to be. No, it's still fast, still brutal, it's still cannibal corpse. But what, what else can you say about the musical direction of this new product? Uh, and I think it's a, it's a pretty intense record. I mean, I think uh, Inhumane Harvest, the song we released, is pretty much just the tip of the iceberg, basically. That is a typical cannibal song. It's got a little bit of everything in it, you know. Um, but man, some of these songs on this new record are just really insane the way, I, uh, the, to put it lightly, I guess, uh, you know, some crazy stuff going on, some, cr some good speed, some uh, good dynamics. I mean, I think in the drum department, I really, really uh, stepped it up a, a lot in my playing and uh, probably our most drum heavy uh, album in a long time. And uh You know, it's just a really intense record, you know, so I think the fans, uh, when they hear it, they're going to be blown away because it's it's definitely taking it maybe to an, uh, to the next level, which is pretty crazy. But uh, I think uh, once it comes out and people hear it, um, they're going to they're going to be like, wow, this is a this is a, a pretty cool Cannibal Corpse record. Mm -hmm. When you say that this album is like kind of like the next level for the band, are you saying that in this new album, you're you would try to experiment with this new, with new sounds, new kind of, uh, new, new different genres of metal maybe? No, not at all. It's just taking it like to, you know, when you listen to an album like say Red Before Black, where I think overall it had more of an old school feeling and um, there was speed going on, but it was more of a kind of a controlled speed kind of a thing, I guess, you know, if you know what I mean, more old school sounding. Yeah. This kind of just re really retakes it back to that just next level of a lot of speed happening, um, just a lot, maybe a little more technical in a lot of ways. I mean, it's still Cannibal Corpse. It always is going to be, um, but we're never going to stray too far from our sound, of course, you know. I mean, if anything, Right, what you're hearing on Inhumane Harvest may be the most diverse because of that, you know, the slow part like that we have in the middle yeah, like yeah. that, you know, that's yeah. something that we really don't delve into too much, you know, oh, of course, it's heavy as can be and it's still a cannibal corpse, you know, but but you don't hear that too often from us, like, you know, song a part like that, maybe. Um, but, you know, I think it's just it's just a great album. I mean, not, nothing that's going to be that much different than we've done other than here's the new songs for this day and age, you know, the time that we're allotted to write, um, you know, here we go. Here's the next batch of songs, the next chapter in the story, so to say. Um, so I don't think, uh, yeah, I, I think our fans are going to be pleased. They're going to, they're definitely going to probably be a little bit like, whoa, it's a lot more intense maybe than they thought it might've been. So, uh, so which I think it'll be a good thing. Do you think that Eric Rutan writing some songs for this album had something to do with it? Um, I mean, he wrote three songs, you know, so and his songs, of course, are going to be his version of Cannibal Corpse. And he's definitely a very intense player and an, an intense writer. And he had to kind of, you know, write to our style in a sense. So that gives it that diversity, of course. But yeah, his three songs are pretty, pretty and crazy songs. They're intense. You know, the, especially the two he wrote, uh, Ritual, Ritual Annihilation and Overtorture, they're, they're very fast songs. Great cannibal songs, but definitely a little bit faster than maybe we've done in a little while. And Condemnation Contagion, just a, a really a great pounding song. Um, and, uh, you know, I, they, you know he, it, it's fitting our style big time. You know, he did a great job. So, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not, because we're all writing individually anyways. And we've done that for what, the last 20 years for the most part, you know, Alex writes his songs, Rob writes his songs, you know, now Eric's writing his songs. So it's not like we're all 
influencing each other kind of a thing because we're not sitting in the same room you know um creating like we would have done in the early days you know um so i think it's just whatever comes out of the guys at the time you know um and luckily alex can when he's ready to create he's able to rob the same way and you know if anything our just i think um our songwriting is just getting better and better and better over the years, you know, as we go, we're getting more refined in that way. And, uh, you know, and then of course, wanting to do something maybe that different, something you didn't do on the last album, something you didn't write before, but yet still being, you know, true to the, you know, their style and the way they write. Um, so, so I think overall it, it, it may have an, an effect, but maybe not, but yeah, just having Eric's songs, of course, is going to give, the sound a little bit, you know, a different dynamic, of course, because he's contributing yeah. for the first time, you know. Now well, let's go way back to 92, 93. Uh, why do you think Hammer Smashed Face is the most popular song by Cannibal Court? Because only in Spotify, Spotify it has like 15 million hits and God knows how many much more hits on YouTube <laughs> on those in, in, in those channels. So why, why do you think this is still the most uh, uh, popular song by Cannibal Corpse? I don't know. It's hard to, hard to explain, right? You know, I mean, is it our best song? I don't know. It's arguable. We have a lot of songs and a lot of people, a lot of fans like different songs, you know, which is good. Um, I, I, maybe it was just the timing of it, maybe, you know, our, our third album, you know, the opening track, I mean, the way it starts and all that kind of thing. I mean, so I, I, I don't know, it's hard to explain really, you know, and then of course it was seemed like right out of the gate, it was like a fan favorite, you know, but at that time, exactly. You only got three albums now, you know? Um, so, you know, you don't have a lot of, of, of songs to choose from in our catalog, Um, and then um, it, it, it became a staple live, of course, you know, so it's hard to explain, you know, I mean, um, it maybe maybe Ace Ventura had a little bit to do with it. I mean, probably <laughs> yeah. not, probably not a lot, but, you know, it, it, it's not going to hurt, of course. But yeah. yeah, it is. It is crazy to think how <laughs> big the song is in for Cannibal Corpse and in death metal for, you know, for that matter, you know, um, but but who, who really knows why? But uh, I think we're just happy that that it, it gets the, you know, the, the respect and, you know, it gets, it, it gets noticed as being one of these songs that are iconic in a, in a way. So that's, that's yeah. a pretty cool thing for sure. It's, it's kind of like the master of puppets for Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> Something like yeah, that. We'll, 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 we'll take it, you know. <laughs> right. Back in 96, 95, maybe, Corpse Grinder Fisher joined the band, uh, right? For the next album, which was Vile. Um, you know, when metal bands change singers, sometimes, oh, pretty much all the time, <laughs> they lose half of the fans or a lot of fans. For example, Sepultura, when they, when Max left the band and they choose Derek Singer, uh, a lot of fans is, is stop caring about Sepultura. Of course, of course, it, it took them like 10 years to to regain that. Uh, space in the metal scene. You no, know, they are, they are doing great nowadays. But same thing happened to Anthrax with John Bush, Iron Maiden with Blaze Bailey, and many other bands, and maybe Black Sabbath with Dio back in the 80s as well. But this didn't happen with Cannibal Corpse when John when when Fisher joined the band. Uh, why do you think that that happened? What well, what didn't happen to to you guys? Well, I, mean, I think really we bettered the band. I mean, we knew that when we made the switch, you know, we were definitely, I mean, the fans obviously were going to be the ones freaking out, which they did at first, you know, as soon as you hear you're changing your singer, everybody just, you know, freaks out and um, because we're doing well at that point, you know, yeah, we obviously really? we made four, <laughs> yeah, we did four records and we're doing well, but I mean, we just knew we could do better. You know, we really knew it could be better. And when we made the switch, when we when we got George in the band, we knew we were making the band better. We just had to prove to everybody, of course, you know. Um, so when they heard, like I said, when they all heard the news, everyone's freaking out. But we were just kind of in the back of our minds. We're just like, well, just wait till you hear it. Just give us a chance. Wait till you hear it. I think you're, everyone's going to be blown away how much better the band is 
having George in it, you know, and uh, uh, and then sure enough, that that that's what ended up happening. Um, you know, I mean, we we just we we were getting better as musicians, anyways. We were just progressing as a band, and then having George just it, it fit the style of the music we were playing really way more than than it did with uh, with Barnes. We felt, you know, um, so I mean, yeah, we got lucky in a lot of ways because exactly it could have backfired, but but at the same time, we weren't worried about that. We we really felt that we were doing the right thing, and we did do the right thing, and we were very confident in you know in George's abilities and what he's bringing to the band that we're going to just it's going to you know it's going to get better and and sure enough it was pretty short-lived the whole you know everyone freaking out kind of a thing as soon as they heard vile and they were you know that first scream and devoured they're all like basically yeah. a sigh of relief and going wow yeah this is some pretty crazy stuff you know this is saying we we have to prove to the fans that way and um you know I remember doing that first tour for that album and, you know, you're going to have those people, you know, heckling a little bit, but it was short lived. It really wasn't much. And by the end of that tour, you know, it was kind of like, you know, yeah, here's the band now. No one's even thinking, you know, of the past for the most part. And, um, you know, yeah, here we are 20, what, five years later, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, we got lucky in a lot of ways, too. But but like I said, we, we knew we were doing the right thing. So. Yeah, choosing devour, devoured by Bermin was a, a smart move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we Great yeah, we felt yeah, yeah. Thank you. We felt it was it it it, it needed to be done. So we're we're glad we made the move. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking main members changing changes in the band, uh, have you ever thought of a possible future for Cannibal Corpse without you or Alex Webster? <laughs> You know, it's tough. It's a, I know it is a weird thing to think, you know. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know what could happen or what would happen, right? You know, I mean, Alex and I have obviously been in the band since the beginning. And, uh, you know, uh, I, yeah, it's it's tough. Exactly. Like, I, I know I do think like, man, how, how long do I have? How long can I keep this up? You know, I'm not getting any younger. And, uh, you know, but at the same time, right, are we a band like, you know, like something like where, where Kiss can do that, you know, where they got makeup and they can change, you know, musicians like that and still have somebody play the part, you know, where that could work if you don't have a Paul Stanley or a Gene Simmons, probably, you know. Actually, Paul Stanley already said that Kiss will continue without him and Jim. Right. And it, make, and it makes sense. That could happen. I can see that working as weird as it would be, you know, but I don't know. I mean, can Cannibal Corpse still be, I guess it could still be successful. You know, I mean, you're, we've changed other members where you would think maybe that would be detrimental and it, and it isn't. So I don't know. I mean, it's just a matter of, um, would we want that to happen? You know, like exactly. I, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough question to answer, you know, because right. If, if hypothetically, if I was to quit you know, say I said hypothetically, well, I say I was just, oh, I quit, you know, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. Now it's going to be up to those guys. Now, do I want the band to go on? I mean, do, you know, do I feel, well, this is my band and, you know, I don't know, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, it shouldn't, it should be done. I'm the drummer, you know, or do I go, man, you know, it's not fair to the other guys and the band could still go on and have success. And that's cool too, you know? So it's a, it's a tough, that's a tough question to answer and it's tough to think about you know because uh because we're not there yet but but i guess we'll i guess we'll see what happens you know i mean we'll 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 see what happens in the future maybe we'll know in 10 or 15 years from now yeah 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 well you would think because man am i going to be able to do this at 60 years old or 65 i mean that'll be You're a little 50 tough. now right I'm, i'm 50 i'll be 53 in six months so oh. it's like holy crap they're getting, you getting older. Older. Yeah. <laughs> well thanks i i appreciate it you know i'm 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 starting to feel it a little more you know but uh oh, great but yeah but you know yeah right in 10 years you know i'll be 63 which is is crazy you know am i gonna be able to keep it up and do what i'm doing right now in 10 years i don't yes, know especially you know? because your work is, is really physical right yeah physical yeah demanding. exactly yeah i mean it's so demanding i mean it's tough i mean that's why athletes don't you know you got to compare it to being like an athlete and that's why athletes of course don't do things like this at 50 years old 60 years old you know they just it, it, it is hard to sustain hard to keep that up and um you know it'll, it'll be tough you know especially if we want to maintain what we've been doing with the band and the intensity and exactly getting 
getting heavier, faster, crazier as we go. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's <laughs> especially with this new easier. album coming. It, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's not getting any easier, man. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe 20 years from now, you can try to experiment with doom metal. Yeah, you know, well, yeah, metal. <laughs> yeah. Maybe even earlier than that. No. <laughs> <Sooner> <laughs> But I know, right, hey, if, we, if we had some more Doom stuff, hey, we could do that till we're 90, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, Paul, a few days ago, you caused some controversy in the metal community because of this uh, vaccine shot, you know, for COVID-19. You said that you weren't sure about taking the vaccine unless you have to, to do it in, in order to go to Europe or other places. Uh, did you expect this uh, controversy from media and fans on social media? Could you be uh, surprised maybe? I mean, I guess I'm surprised at anything that people are gonna just like, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I saw it on Blabbermouth and I didn't even read any of the replies or the comments. So I was just like, you know, people are going to talk no matter what they're going to have opinions. Everyone's, you know, so I'm like, I'm not even going to bother. So I don't even really know what was said um, other than just, you know, I don't know. It's just who the heck am I, you know, to even cause controversy kind of a thing, you know? Uh, so I, I don't know, man, it's, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's just silly. I think, you know, it, you know, that it's, it, it, that it would cause any, any stir, I guess, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, um, I said what I said, I guess. I mean, that's, I guess that's what, how I, what I believe because I said it, right? But, uh, um, you know. So but, you, yeah, you but, still think the same about uh, that shot? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I know, I, I, you know, I, you got to look at, everyone's got different views and everything. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not sitting here going, oh, my God, I can't wait to get the shot. I'm not, I'm not, you know, that's just my, the truth. You know, will I get it? Maybe, I don't know, right? You know, I mean, exactly. If I have to get it, I guess I have to get it. But I'm not, you know, I, I'm not sitting here going, right, I, if, if I'm going to get it or I'm thinking about it like, oh, as soon as I'm available, it's available. I'm going to tomorrow to get it. I mean, I just don't think that way, you know, so so who who, who knows? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how's your relationship with Pat O'Brien? Uh, did you talk some from time to time with him? No comment on that. All right. All right. What can you tell me uh, about the uh, uh, the songs that Eric Rutan songs for uh, write wrote for this for this album? Yeah, they sound kind of like Hate Eternal, maybe a little bit. I mean, he's got his own style, of course, you know. But he, like I said, he's got to write Cannibal, of, you know, too, to fit it in there. But he writes, and you know, I think it's noticeable. I think when people hear the songs that Eric wrote, they're gonna go, okay that's eric he writes eric, very right. yeah yeah he writes very atmospheric you know a lot going on in his songs a lot of mood um you know a lot of different guitar parts a lot of doubling with the guitars and things like that you know so i, I think people are going to hear the three songs and go okay that's that's eric you know um so but right he had to write um cannibal style eric songs and not hate eternal or not morbid angel or anything like yeah. that so so I think I think he did that. I think they're great songs, and uh, I think the fans are really going to dig them. So can't wait for uh, for everybody to hear them. Yeah. Plus, he's really familiar with the uh, Cannibal style since he was a producer for the last four albums, right? Uh, yeah. He didn't do a Skeletal Domain, but right since Kill, he did. This will be what his fifth album now, you know. So. So yeah, exactly. He knows our style. Um, he's been around us long enough and everything. And, um, you know, so when he was, when he had to write, um, you know, the, the material came to him pretty, you know, pretty, pretty easy, not easy, but you know, it wasn't like he needed all this time to work on songs. I mean, he's a professional in that way. He's a songwriter and, but he definitely knew what needed to be done in the cannibal vein, you know, for yeah. him to, uh, you know, come up with some material here. So, uh, so he did that, and uh, like you said, yeah, he's no stranger to us by any means. Mm -hmm. He produced Kill as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, great. That was the That's... first one, right? Yeah, Kill was the first one he produced, yep. That's my favorite album from the Fisher era. Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. That one, yeah. one kind of took us to another level right there at that point for some reason. 
you know, the yeah. songs just came together and, you know, the great production, of course, but it was really the songs. I mean, you got, we got some great songs on that record and that just seemed to kind of elevate us at that point. Then where we were from where we were at, I guess, you know? Um, so that was a, uh, it was a, a defining moment for cannibal, you know, to move forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk about the uh, influences of death metal uh, back in the late eighties. Of course, everybody says that Possessed is the, like the first death metal band ever. Some other people say the band Death by Chuck Schuldiner is the very first one. But I don't know if you are familiar with the Mr. Bangle demo back in 86 or 87. And they actually re-recorded -re -re that demo and re-release -re it as a, as a new product like last year, I think. Are you familiar with that uh, demo from the late uh, middle, middle, mid, mid 80s, actually? You know, I'm not. I mean, I know of it and I know I, re I remember reading that, right, that they redid it what, with uh, Dave Lombardo, I believe now and all yeah. that, I think, um, it, you know, but I was never, never listened. So I, I have no idea. I and uh, and back then, of course, we did not know of that uh, of them or I didn't. And anyways, I don't really I can't speak for everyone else, but I don't think anybody else did. It wasn't like some influence. So uh, so I, I, I don't know. But I do know, like you said, that they re-released it and everything, but I have yeah. never heard it. Yeah, a few maybe like 10 years ago, I was talking to this friend and he told me, man, yeah, you should listen to this Mr. Bangle demo. It sounds really close to death metal. It's actually, actually more like a death metal slash grindcore oh, album. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and actually oh. Mike Patton does guttural voices. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, wow. And it, it was released in 80, I'm not sure, but it's gotta be 86 or 87. Okay. And this was before death, before <laughs> Possessed. Right, and, right, right. Yeah, and I got the chance to interview uh, Uh, Trevor Perez, the guitar player from Obituary, right? Yep. That's his name, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. And I asked the same question to, to that guy, and he wasn't familiar with the demo as well. <laughs> so I guess it's a real, really obscure demo tape from the 80s, even for you guys. Yeah, I guess, because I, don't, I never really hear anybody talk about it until you just brought it up about, like, exactly anybody. Uh, and we've been around, of course, and we know a lot of the bands that started out when we did and everything, and no one's ever talked about that band, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Everyone's talking about the same thrash bands and all that yeah, 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 um, yeah. that we all grew up with and were big influences for us, but nobody's ever mentioned that. So I'll have to check it out. It sounds interesting, definitely. Yeah. But check out the demo because this new version sounds more like a thrash metal album maybe because okay. of lombardo and scott ian are in right 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 yeah i'll have yeah. to check out the demo i'll definitely do that the name of the demo is the raging wrath of the easter bunny oh yeah yeah i remember that i remember yeah. hearing the title too going that's a pretty <laughs> pretty uh, crazy title there but I'll, i'll definitely have to check it out all right all right well are there any touring plans for uh, later this year already Nothing in, nothing in concrete yet. I mean, you know, we, we're still kind of waiting it out, I guess. I mean, it looks like things are going to start opening up, obviously, soon here. Um, so uh, with any luck by the end of the year or early next year, we're out on the road, you know. But, uh, but yeah, it's still too early to tell. No, nothing concrete at this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, Paul, time for the stupid question of the day. <laughs> Why did you cut your hair? Are you going through some low face or something? <laughs> Man, my hair was a mess, wasn't it? It was just crazy, you know. I was getting, I was getting so sick of it, you know. I mean, I, I mean, I just felt, I don't know. I'm not young anymore, you know. I, I, I don't feel the way I did when I was, you know, a teenager, 20 years old. Like, oh, oh yeah, I was longing for, for long hair, of course, you know. I mean, that was a goal of my life, like any metalhead for the most part, growing up, right? You want long hair. And I did achieve that. If you look at back at some of the old pictures, I mean, my hair was pretty long and all. Um, the early 90s, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It was early 90s. It was really long for being a very curly as it is. And um, I think maybe about, um, I don't know, about 20 years ago, it just, for some reason, it just stopped growing. And it was, it was just, it was kind of shorter. And I didn't yeah. like it at that length. To me, it was I'm like, I'm, 
Something yeah, like it was. Uh, yeah, and I used to have it down to there, you know, and I yeah. wanted it long. And if it wasn't going to be long like that anymore, I felt like that shoulder length, man. I just, eh. and then being all curly, it just turns into a, a bush. It's like a, you know, very, <laughs> very nesty, you know. And I'm like, man, this is just ridiculous. So, so I was <laughs> toying. I was toying with this for years. I remember when we played a show in um, Tampa. You know, geez, it was probably six, six years ago, seven years ago. And um, I remember getting home after the show because it was one we did like one uh, two one offs where we played in Fort Lauderdale in Tampa and uh, it wasn't attached to a tour, which was a rare for us. But I remember getting home that night and looking in the mirror and my hair was just like a, it was a wreck. It looked like I put my finger in a in a light socket and I was like. Yeah, I, I, I looked at myself and I thought, I go, man, you look like an idiot. I mean, you know, that's what I'm look, looking at myself. Look, look at you. you. You look like a, you know, just a, I don't know what you look like, but this isn't good. And, and ever since then, I'm like, man, I got to cut my hair. And then it really took me years to build up that kind of that, the, you know, uh, just the, 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 the to yeah, yeah, the right to do it because I'm so used to not having that, uh, you know, just having hair. But once I finally did it, I'm like, ah, man, this is awesome. I love it, you know. In and out, and you look shower. younger, actually. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think it fits me all right too. You know, it definitely fits me. So it's yeah. been a couple of years now, and uh, you know, I'm 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 digging it. So, uh, but yeah, being a 53 year old man now, I think it, it's okay. You know, I, I don't mind it. So plus so. you live in Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a my, good move because of the heat. And, oh and, man. My hair made me so much hotter. I had, so I have such thick hair. Right. And then back when it was long, it was like, oh my gosh, man, so much more uh, hot, you know? And I really, for years, I'd never even wore it down. I always had it like in a ponytail, you know, because I didn't want it in my face. I didn't want it on my neck. So, I mean, almost like why do i even have it if i'm just going to wear it in a ponytail all the time which yeah. is what i did you know but it just was that kind of like yeah that weird getting to that mental aspect of just cut it man you know you don't you don't need it anymore you don't want it so so cut it off so i'm glad i finally did all right that's it for today paul thank you so much for your time this was great Uh, by the way, how do you pronounce your last name? Because that's always a, like a mystery to me. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the uh, English, American English way would be Mazurkowitz. Right. Mazurkowitz would be that. But if, if you're talking straight up Polish, because of course it's a Polish, Polish. last oh, name, right, right. it'd be Mazurkiewicz. Oh, all right. So, yeah, if I go to Poland, you don't say Mazurkowicz. You know, they're going to look at you and want to fight, you know, because they'll look and go, no, it's Mazukiewicz. You know, so, right. Yeah. It's, uh, that, but, but, you know, growing up being, of course, like I said, um, uh, American, it, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, you, you have everyone Americanized all the Polish names and everything. So, it's Mazurkowicz is, is, is what you would say. So. All right. Well, thanks again. Uh, for your time, Paul. This this was really really awesome, and, me, and this will be out maybe this Sunday already. Okay, cool. Thanks, so you. I it appreciate out. it. Great talk. Great right. talking to you, man. So, take care, All man. Right. All right, you too. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>